Welcome everybody and thank you for attending today's informational webinar for prospective college partners uh, to learn more about Center for Student Opportunity, the I'm First initiative, and our work to support the work of you as college partners in serving first-gen students as they attempt to be the first in their family to attend and graduate college. My name is Ali Levy. I am the new Associate Director for College Partner Relations at Center for Student Opportunity. I joined the team here after several years of consulting, of consulting work. Previous to that time, I served as an Assistant Dean of Admissions at Wesleyan University in Connecticut, where I was recruiting a lot of the first-gen population uh, of the DC and Chicago area. Since that time, I also founded the College Counseling Department at Sci Academy, a public open enrollment charter school in New Orleans that served around 92% first-gen students and 94% free reduced lunch students. My interest in working with CSO is because I have been the, the, uh, the beneficiary of their terrific content in their guidebook, which we will discuss later, as well as their support from having worked on the college admission side to affirm the work that my colleagues and I were doing and, and working uh, on at Wesleyan University to engage, support, enroll, retain, and graduate first-gen students. I'm very excited to be, to be able to offer this today. Um, if there are colleagues that you know that attempted to be on today's uh, webinar but were unable, we will be recording this and posting it later. Thank you for taking the time. I also wanted to say that we will be taking questions at the end of the webinar, so please make sure that you ask them. Um, and I will be uh, attempting while running the webinar to be uh, attentive to those as they pop up and also chat information. If for any reason some of those questions are not answered in today's chat, I will, or webinar, I will uh, make sure to follow up with you individually after the fact. Thank you. So to begin, I'd just like to offer some context for our work. We think that there's something special about being first in your family to attend and graduate from college. You know, today that there are about 15 million students, more than 15 million students, that are enrolled in first generation, that are enrolled in post-secondary institutions. And at present, about 4.5 million students are actually low-income first-generation students. So this becomes a, an increasingly sizable percentage of the student um, population that we aim to support and enroll on our campuses. Unfortunately, nine out of every 10 of those students will not earn a bachelor's degree by age 24. We believe that that is something that we, uh, it's our prerogative to address, it's our impediment to, uh, an impediment to the larger educational outcomes of our country, and we wanted to be involved in doing the work to support those students as they changed this statistic. As we see it though, the problem for first-gen college access really is not that they lack motivation or qualification for college, far from that. Simply, too often they lack the access to good information and good support to navigate the college process and possibly more importantly, to access the colleges that are the most committed and most aware of the needs they have that will, uh, that if addressed, will lead to their success. So, that's where we come in. Uh, Center for Student Opportunity partners with four-year colleges and universities to support their efforts on behalf of first-gen college students as we create tools to help those first-gens with college search and college planning activities. We know that so many four-year colleges, like the ones that you are representing, care about first-gen students and can be accessible and affordable options for them, while certainly giving those students the best shot at being successful in out of the classroom and also supporting them towards graduation. But the larger challenge is making sure that the students and their supporters believe it. All too often, even high achieving, motivated first-gen students are choosing post-secondary options that aren't the most conducive to their success. This can happen sometimes in the form of for-profit schools, trade schools, or non-selective commuter schools. And, and simply, we think that, we, that it's a really realistic, attainable option to attend a four-year college out of, out of high school, and especially those that can best serve them and push them to being the first in their family to graduate. So our goal is to help those aspiring first-gen students to realize that there are opportunities out there that exist, and particularly that there are campus programs and support services to help them succeed academically, socially, and financially. We believe strongly that a high tide raises all boats, 
and that more colleges that support our mission and, and participate in our program, the stronger our collective voice as a nonprofit in this case, college partners and student supporters will be in supporting the supporting supporting and strengthening efforts for first-gen students um, in their path to success. Through the college partner application process, we'll have a chance to learn more about your institution's commitment to first-gen college students. And you, by extension, will have the opportunity to learn more about the ins and outs of our program and to ask questions about where this partnership can go. But of course, to help you out as you consider completing the application for partnership, we'd like to give you a cursory, and I, and I, I promise, cursory overview of our program and the major benefits and services we provide in partnership. So I think the most important place to start is, some, is on uh, and speaking about the I'm First initiative. Many of you know about our work through some familiarity with this. So this is our flagship initiative. And for some context here, it was really the, one of our first areas of engagement for college partners um, and, and one of the most critical tools for them now in partnership. The history behind this is in 2013, with the help of a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we launched I'mFirst.org, which is designed as an online community celebrating first generation college students and supporting the next generation of students who are working hard to reach the goal of being first gen. I really want to zero in on the term celebrating. There is no apology on our nonprofit's behalf about rooting for these students and by extension, rooting for the college partners that serve them. We've seen, we've seen, I'm sorry, we've received an extremely warm reception from students, from schools, from youth serving organizations, and even media. And we've quickly become a leading voice and resource for the first gen movement writ large. This momentum is something we hope to continue, and we want to grow our community of college partners who share our mission and demonstrate that they truly care about first gens and first gens succeeding on their campuses. I'mFirst.org is first and foremost, though, a college search tool, and it's designed with first-generation students in mind. Now, unique from other popular college search tools, profiles of colleges and universities on I'mFirst.org help students answer the question, what's in it for me as a first-generation college student? The still in front of you on the screen is a uh, demonstration of the uh, the smaller um, icons associated with the, uh, the basic landing page for students as they're using the college search tool. But what's most important here <laughs> is the profiles that exist, like this one from Franklin and Marshall College. Um, a shout out to anyone on the line who uh, is from Franklin and Marshall, a long, uh, long, uh, <clears throat> long supportive of our efforts and, and a really important institution in promoting first-gen college access. The profiles we create are really attempting to get beyond talking about some smaller discussions of a broad brushstroke of the institution's facts and figures. We, we really want to focus the college profile on important campus programs and opportunities for first-gen students. So what might those be? Do they offer a fly-in program for prospective students? Is there a summer bridge program for incoming students? Are there peer mentoring opportunities on campus to help students persist towards graduation? Are there particular scholarships? Are there any number of other services and, and programs that, that institutions are adding all the time to support these needs? So this is kind of a closer snapshot of, in this case, again, for, uh, for Franklin and Marshall, what they've chosen to highlight in their profile about their work to support first-gen students. Um, the facts and figures on this profile highlight important student diversity as well, uh, student success metrics, affordability metrics, and other admissions information that can help students think about how they may uh, have the opportunity to access uh, what's there on this particular institution. Now, what's also important to note is if you see the green button on the upper left part of the screen that says I'm interested, uh, I'm interested. Students can, as they are searching, 
can tell a college that they're interested in them by clicking the I'm interested button, which then sends a notification to the college partner for the college partner to then follow up on and, and hopefully use as a way to recruit that student. Additionally, students can share a, a college that they're liking in their own personal social media network where you see the blue Facebook, uh, Facebook share button or even the tweet program. And we have seen student users say, hey, check this out. I'm really loving uh, learning more about Franklin and Marshall College. Did you even know that this is an option? And they also have this amazing multicultural overnight diplomat experience program. Now, Turning towards what you would get as a college partner, this is an example of a college partner's dashboard. So you would have your own access to the I'm First site, and through that, as a full partner, you would be able to track your profile views, the number of students that are interested in you, and be able to also search and save information about students that you wanted to recruit. Here is an example of some of the thumbnails that might, would come up of our student users on the account as you begin search uh, as part of your, your user functionality as a, as a full partner. And this, more closely, is what a student profile page looks like. So, of course, students have uh, been able to self-report their information. Um, we wanted to also create, uh, to ensure that there were not barriers to students creating user accounts. So, at present, we wanted to make sure that they were only demanding a certain number of required fields uh, as they create it so that they can really get the opportunity to get in here and access the, inf the information. This is largely brought to us from our college, our CBO and college access partners who said that first-gen students specifically would want to be on sites that would allow them to get in quickly and, and, and learn about the colleges that are being featured. The other component of, of dashboard access as a full college partner would be your ability to find organizations and search community-based organizations and college, pro, college access programs and other programs across the country that supports first-gen students and you and connect with them directly to ideally build opportunities for partnership as well as build opportunities through the course of recruitment travel if you are logging on as an admissions representative to have the opportunity to go and visit these spaces and work with people who oftentimes are using our resources to help shore up some of the um, some of the spaces that some of these students may not be getting information around with respect to the lack of college counseling resources that may exist at their particular high school. So we have really placed a stamp of approval on CBOs as part of our work, and they are a critical part of our partnership. This is an example of one of our, our CBO's profiles. Um, we, this is certainly an example of a full profile being filled out. Um, we, are, we are encouraging our organizations to, to make sure that they are updating this information regularly, just as we would uh, encourage you as college partners to make sure that if there are statistics that change year to year, contact information and those pieces, that they are reflected consistently. And, Perhaps one of the, perhaps the most important piece of the I'm First.org initiative and something I really want to spend time talking about are the student voice pieces. And those come in, the, in, in play in the form of the student blog, the I'm for Stories campaigns, and the other pieces that we have seen drawing students to our site in a way that they may not be to other college search sites. The reason there being students are really eager to engage and think about vulnerable instances that demonstrate real paths towards success. That's where we've had a lot of success. Um, so here, this is a, a page discussing the blog uh, piece uh, and, and who is on the blog is an important distinction. So as a college partner, um, any institution who has <clears throat> entering first year students uh, who is a college partner, uh, those students are eligible to apply for our four year renewable scholarship um, which is a blog scholarship, and a student, excuse me, a student who um, who applies for this scholarship would apply at the end of their senior year, and if selected, they would receive a four-year renewable scholarship to create original user content about being first gen to, for the duration of their four years in school. Um, it's also something, that, of course, that you could use as content as a yield tool or just anything that you wanted to feature on your own site about the first gen experience at your school. Um, our blog has been, or rather our scholarship is now, has been up and running for six years at this point, and we've really seen uh, students love this component of our site, making it very real to them. 
The other piece of this, of course, was the stories campaign. Um, Borrowing uh, the template from the movement in the LGBTQ community uh, with respect to um, the It Gets Better campaign, we really saw the ability for a, a kind of front camera uh, personal narrative in video form to be something that draws um, students to think about uh, how their experience will be very personal, but also a way to encourage pride and identity formation around the first gen tag. Um, we've been very lucky uh, that we've had a lot of involvement in this. We've had stories given by our bloggers, stories given by stu staff and supporters on college campuses, and of course we were also very lucky when the first lady contributed her own I'm First video to this campaign. These stories are inspiring and they offer true advice to a generation of students who will be first. To highlight how college partners have taken this and run with it, we, we love to brag about some of our college partners. One of them, Bucknell, created their own first-gen stories landing page on their website where they involved stories from campus administrators, professors, students, support staff, all kinds of folks on their campus who are first and wanted to affirm that, in this case, Bucknell has a real presence of and support network around first gens. Um, we also wanted to say that even if you don't end up choosing to be in partnership with us, we have seen a lot of colleges um, kind of use this framework and idea, and we're ha happy to promote this with you. Um, we, we've seen this really be an important lever to encourage student users who are first gen who could visit your admission site to believe, okay, this can be for me. Um, they actually know and care about me and my and my unique needs as a first gen student. A couple other pieces. I, I, I definitely want to pause here and, and talk about the the I'm First Guide to College and my own particular um, familiarity with it. So the I'm First Guide to College was the first major initiative of Center for Student Opportunity. And we published this guidebook, which is a guidebook that has two essential halves. The first half is a curricula and student handbook uh, for students to use, ideally, if they do not have a college counselor uh, in their in their lives to guide them through some of the critical um, college uh, application steps, college financial aid literacy, some thinking about the non-cognitive needs that they will have to develop over time as high schoolers and is certainly continuing through their college careers to make sure that they are successful. And we've gotten expert advice from our college partners, um, from from college, uh, from CBO and college access folks who work with students directly to really be prescriptive and give an important curriculum to help these students move towards college attainment. I know personally that I used this guide to college um, when I was a college counselor to give exercises to my students um, and, and give them units of a lot of self-reflective uh, exercises to have them really internalize what they would need to do to be successful. So here's just an example. There's one piece in the first unit about effective goal setting. And this is a really important piece in, in thinking about for uh, mapping for first-gen students all the, the different goals that they can set out in front of them and the, the steps that will need to be needed to achieve those goals. Um, of course, there are these uh, additional components where students will uh, do some writing and also some quizzes at the end of every unit to make sure that they have mastered the content. And here is an example, again, of Franklin and Marshall College, of what the uh, the second half of the book. The second half of the book are featured profiles of each of our college partners. And <clears throat> these profiles, uh, as you can see, really do have a lot of fast facts on the right side. But you'll see, in, in similar to the online profile, we have can in, it, we have made sure to include for the, the student users of the guidebook some really important um, programs that these colleges offer that will tell way more about the number of dorms that they offer or, or maybe some, some less kind of impactful statistics that, that we think um, may not be as important for their uh, understanding and comprehension of what college could be for them. And since our first publication of the guidebook in 2008, we've actually distributed over 30,000 copies nationwide. And a, a critical uh, thing to mention is as a full partner, you are entitled to 25 free copies of the guidebook to then send to uh, CBOs or high schools or anyone in your student support network that you feel could benefit from the tools and resources. And of course, with your own uh, profile featured in it, it is a, another instance where we are saying this is a university and college that cares about and knows uh, how to support first-gen students. 
Another benefit of partnership is our promotional piece. We are invested in uh, and, and through distribution of newsletters that reach over 40,000 students, counselors, and college access providers. We provide monthly opportunity knocks newsletters that highlight opportunities for first-gen students on the various uh, campuses of our college partners. We also, of course, are actively promoting your excuse me, work in uh, your work in, in your campus programs through social media, but primarily through uh, Twitter and Facebook. We have seen this be also an incredible lever to encourage student users who may be affiliated with some college or access program or high school, uh, or even just connected to a friend who is, um, for them to get some of the information about the, the work and the programs that you're offering. Still another benefit of, of full partnership at CSO is access to our learning community. As a community of peers, we're facilitating opportunities for the college partners to share with one another and exchange ideas, best practices, successful models, and other innovative approaches to help lift us all up in the work that we're doing to support first-gen students. Myself, as the College Partner Relations Director, I am invested in creating these webinars that, that often are partner-driven topics about things like peer mentoring, uh, summer bridge programs. Um, soon we're going to be doing uh, a webinar about um, how to think about early warning signs, um, even in the first year, half year, uh, that may indicate that students are, are struggling and, and how to properly intervene by pulling some of the best practices from our college partners who are out there. So we're really also transitioning, especially in the college, in the learning community of our college partner exchange uh, to doing more work on college success and retention um, and, and ways to really strengthen, strengthen those efforts. Um, also at the bottom of the screen, you will see examples of some of the programs run by my colleague Chelsea Jones on the student side, where throughout the year she is running um, monthly first-gen office hour Twitter chats and Google Hangouts that feature our college partners as experts on topics ranging from financial aid award letters, fly-in programs, personal statements, or specialized school opportunities, especially for HBCUs, HSIs, military schools, women's colleges, Christian colleges, and other um, specific uh, institutions that are attempting to attract a certain population of college goers. Um, so there is a lot, of course, here. Uh, I'm going to uh, recap quickly, and then, of course, we want to go to questions. Um, I'm looking quickly in the questions box to see if people have posed any. I see a couple. I love it and I will be getting to them shortly. Sorry for my delay, just wanted to make sure I'm seeing all of this. So, to recap, we at CSO are very much invested in forming a strong network of peer institutions that are similarly supported to first-gen college success. We're here to promote and strengthen your institution's efforts to recruit and retain first-gen students. We're here to help you reach prospective first-gens and their supporters in terms of college access programs and CBOs. We're also here to share and learn best practices from one another for successfully recruiting and retaining first-gen students. Now, I think this will be something that we will breach later, uh, but of course we want to make sure that you all know um, that as a nonprofit organization, we do ask college partners to fulfill an annual partnership contribution to sustain and grow our programs. Now, what, what are those? As a full partnership, and uh, full partners would be able to take, of all, take advantage of all of the benefits that I have just um, uh, outlined, full partnership at CSO is a $2,800 a year commitment, um, which includes all of these benefits and services. I, I will say, of course, it's easier for me to say, but I, I do think that this is a, a nominal fee when associated with all of the partnership benefits that you would get. Um, uh, the other tier of membership, partnership rather, is associate partnership, and that fee every year uh, as an annual fee is $1,500 a year, and that really, that associate partnership level really focuses on marketing opportunities uh, restricted to the profile on the imfirst.org website, the profile in the printed I'm First Guide to College, as well as some uh, us usability and functionality with the learning uh, community. So, of course, the reason for our conversation today is because we would like to encourage you to apply if you believe your institution um, is committed to this work and would would uh, would have a really important um, 
uh, need addressed by being in partnership with us. And of course, we would love to support the work that you're doing. Um, college partner applications are reviewed and approved twice a year. Uh, right now, we're in the middle of recruitment season, and the deadline to initiate partnership January 1st would be to apply by this upcoming November 30th. Uh, a plug, just because I have been in the admissions world, I know all of you are, the earlier you get your application in, the better. Uh, as part of the application, we these institutions um, will have a, a, a phone conversation and interview with me um, to discuss the partnership and to illustrate a little bit more about the application. Um, institutions who apply should be four-year residential colleges and universities. Um, CSO college partners are generally characterized as institutions with above average retention and graduation rates, a clear commitment to first generation college students as demonstrated by their campus programs and services that support them. Um, and in the application, here's what you should be ready to touch upon. Um, be prepared to briefly answer questions about your school's mission, history, uh, and including re relevant data on your first gen student population retention graduation rates. You should be able to share about some of the important campus programs that support first-gen students on your campus or and or traditionally underserved students uh, that are academic, social, and financial supports. We also are going to want to know about some of the campus-sponsored programs or partnerships that support pre-college students locally or nationally that you are uh, involved in. Uh, or even just sharing, a, you can share with us about some of the campus contacts um, campus contacts that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis to do work on behalf of first-gen students. When an application is received, we will schedule a phone interview to learn more about your institution's efforts on behalf of first-gen students. And during the interview, you will have the opportunity to learn more about us and ask questions about the partnership. After the phone interview, we confer internally and we notify you within a matter of days if the partnership is approved. We will then ask you to sign a college partner agreement and we will ask you to uh, initiate uh, the partnership and, and in that initiation we will be issuing a, a partnership contribution invoice as well as helping you set up your user account and profile on imfirst.org. So thank you for the ability to run that down for you. I'm really eager to get to your questions. I see that many of them have popped up in the queue. So I'm just going to scroll over them quickly. I do see a, uh, a question coming in, um, just an overarching question earlier in the broadcast. Yes, there will be, an, uh, someone asked, will there be an archived version of the webinar available for folks who could not attend? Yes, there will be. We will be recording this um, and then disseminating it through an email afterwards. Thank you for, for asking that. I'd like also to say that if you know in listening to this conversation that maybe another member of your uh, marketing staff, admission staff, student support staff, or, or whatever department you are representing would like to have a follow conversation with me, I'd be happy to do that. Um, another question I see is what would you what would make a CSO approve or not approve a school's application? Again, we really do think that it's important to involve uh, college partners here who have a demonstrated commitment to supporting first-gen students. So we would want to see that, again, they're at least at above uh, the average um, statistics for the state and region with respect to four- and six-year graduation rates for first-gen students, as well as looking at the programs that are on their campus that are supporting uh, these students currently. However, I do want to say that in our mission to bring the larger awareness around first-gen issues, we are bringing into partnership, as you can tell from looking at our other current college partners, a wide range of schools in terms of who they support. We have incredibly selective institutions on our school. We have students that are not particularly selective because we want to make sure that as a community of college partners, we are, uh, are growing together about disseminating best practices uh, among one another to really serve these students. So again, we, we do want to make sure that you are at a average or above average levels of retention statistics um, and a solid demonstration of programs on your campus. Um, so oh, someone also asks about our, our scholarship. Um, the, the scholarship, again, is a scholarship for students who are entering first-year students at partner institutions um, who will serve as bloggers on our site about their first-gen experiences for four years. The amount of scholarship dollars, which was what the question was, that's $1,000 a year every year for four years. At present, we have 39 students, um, you know, freshmen through seniors, who are involved as scholarship awardees. And while $1,000 may not seem like a ton of money for some of you, we do believe that that's a, a generous um, uh, commitment we make to them that will help them with some 
some possibly gapped costs with respect to books or tech needs or things like that. So we've, we've been really proud of that and we are attempting to grow that scholarship amount. Another question here is just more generally, how does a university go about becoming a college partner? Well, if you go on our website, there is, uh, if you go to www.imfirst.org, um, you can scroll down to the bottom and there is a button that says partners. Um, we, I will send out a reminder email after this for those of you who attended with a link to the college partner application. But the college partner application can be started online and if possible, or if you'd like, you can also email me at the end of this broadcast to request a Word document version of it to complete um, right away. Uh, so certainly that's something we want to be able to get to you. Um, <clears throat> Another question that I got here, and just a great question from Beth O'Day. Um, she asked, how are institutions here identifying first-gen students? Is it on the application? So Beth, that's a great question. A lot of our institutions actually, by virtue of being in connection with us, but also maybe had done this previous to their, their affiliation with us, they are in fact capturing first-gen data um, in the application stage. And, and that is something that we've actually talked about as one of our best practice um, learning community webinars that we may want to move ahead with moving forward about what are we doing to truly capture this data to then know on our campus how we can serve the numbers that are there. It's possible that some students are not self-reporting, but this, this is a good question um, that may frame future learning community uh, opportunities. Um, so I see a great question here um, with respect to online traffic views and the kind of activity on the website. So I, I thank you, John Maroney, for, for voicing this. Um, I apologize for, for blowing people's spots up, but I do appreciate <laughs> when they offer these great questions. So John asks, um, what is the amount of traffic and views a college on a site receives? Um, so at present, our latest stat is that 17, there are 17,000 active student users on our site. And largely, this has come to us through organic means and also through advertisement from our college, uh, our CBO and college access friends on that side who encourage their students to sign up. Um, with respect to uh, with the numbers of um, of uh, you know interested students and student views, um, we you know. I think it's it's average to see a lot of student views um, with respect to the ratio between student users and student views. So several thousand views is, is typical for a, a given institution on our site between maybe two, uh, one, you know, 1,500 on the lower end to upwards of six to 7,000 views um, for some of our more popular college partners on the site. Um, with respect to the metrics about who is on our site, um, while we do not know all of the self-reported data from our student users of seven, there, from the numbers that we're able to pull of those 17,000 student users, it's an incredibly balanced geographical representation, uh, which I know is a part, is a question often because uh, when you look at our partnership um, in terms of our state representation, uh, we do tend to have a larger partnership on in the West, the Midwest, and the Mid-Atlantic and South. However, we are seeing that that's not an indicator of what student users are on our site, which also will help um, students hopefully find your institutions, those who are, are willing to, to go uh, away to school. Um, with respect to um, how college partners are able to use that data, at any moment they are able to extract and export student interested data through, uh, through a CSV download on their portal. And that's a, a, a full partner benefit. Um, I did want to say though that while this is, a, this is a, you know, a college search tool, the way our initiative is conceived is, is much more directed towards um, promoting the idea of first-gen success and, and illuminating first-gen programs as opposed to solely being a lead-gen service. So I want to say that with all, um, with all clarity. People who sign up to be college partners with us are, are, are doing this, of course, for exposure, but um, are, are also kind of committed to the larger mission of, of educating the first-gen community. So um, I see another, another question um, here, uh, a question about our 
commuter campuses that have off-campus apartments, are they able to join as well? So thank you for this question. So we do want to see that a heavy percentage of your first-gen student experience is a residential experience. This is in connection to our understanding of um, you know, first-gen success often being uh, slightly correlated to the kinds of um, residential experiences they can have and the kind of connected uh, uh, support services that are installed through uh, the housing opportunities on residential campuses. However, if you are representing an institution that has a commuter, uh, a kind of heavy commuter experience, we would be uh, we would be able to consider you in partnership largely because we know that a lot of first-gen students are electing to commute as part of the financial, um, uh, you know, the, the endeavor that makes the most financial sense for them and their family. We recognize that. We would never want to push a, a potential college partner away who, who has that as their current um, makeup. There are a lot of great questions coming in, so thank you for, for continuing to fire them at me. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, Again, someone asked me, are there going to be uh, copies of the presentation slides? Yes, I will be able to circulate the presentation slides as well as um, a, a copy of the webinar itself. But again, I really do want to encourage people, you know, it's really sometimes helpful to connect with me um, to talk uh, even before the application stage about what might be here for you and your institution. So. Um, a great question coming in from, from Irma Hedgepeth. She asks about the $1,000 scholarships that are awarded to student bloggers. She asks, you know, how does one qualify? So as a former college counselor, I love uh, the, the, the mechanism and the design of our scholarship process. Last year, we had about 1,000 students apply for 10 scholarship um, spaces. Now, we know that that isn't, is selective. However, we do, we, we're excited to see that there's a real uptick in interest um, from students using the site uh, towards this piece because of, of their interest, of course, in receiving these funds, but also sharing their stories. Um, now, we select them in, in, a, in a kind of, uh, you know, a, a group uh, similar to an admissions committee where we are reading, uh, we're going to ask them to submit information about the institution that they're going to so that we can assure that they're actually uh, going to be enrolling at one of our partner institutions. And also we want to see them write about why being first gen is important to them and, and why blogging is a critical tool for ensuring the larger success of the greater first gen movement. We then follow up with a phone interview and we select uh, them over the summer and then we are able to, you know, to issue a press release for, for you on the college side if you have a student on your side who is selected as a, as a, as a scholarship blogger, we give you a press release to brag about that um, and brag about uh, the, the work that you're doing on your campus to, to encourage um, this, uh, this idea and, and this activity. So I'm just looking back at some more questions. So I see another question about what are the, the average graduation rates uh, for first-gen students and where might someone who was hoping to apply see, uh, find those uh, statistics so that when they can, when they apply, they, they have those statistics ready. So we, we have used um, as, a, as a kind of basic benchmark some of the data from collegeresults.org. Um, and that has been a way for us to check some of the, ins the uh, information about your institutions with respect to four and six-year graduation rates, as well as um, uh, some other information about, um, you know, uh, Pell, uh, Pell Grant um, awards, uh, as well as um, some other kind of key figures um, that tell us about the, the first-gen and underserved and low-income communities that you serve on your campus. Thank you for that, Kathleen. So I'm just scrolling down here. There's a lot here. Thank you for, for putting it out. Um, and and to, to say thank you back to the person who thanked me for answering their question. It's my pleasure. It's what I'm here for. Um, so at present, it's, it's looking like, um, oh, I see a great question from Shamika Cameron. Thank you, Shamika. So the question is, do, pa do partners only have access to the students who have expressed interest in them? That is such a critical question. So as a full partner, you can actually use your dashboard to search the database of our students based on location or major. So you could actually do a search, save students who 
qualify under your search. So an example might be, I'm searching for uh, students who live in North Carolina, Georgia, and Texas who want to be business majors, and then that will populate a list of students who've self-reported that as their interest areas. You can then save those students and export that file later to then potentially market to them. Um, that is a full partnership benefit. Uh, now, when you as a full partner or associate partner will receive notifications when a student is interested in you, um, uh, but as an associate partner, you would not be able to search the student database. You would only receive notifications about uh, students interested in you. You couldn't, in turn, search and recruit students through the database. That's a great question. I hope that's clear. So just scrolling through again, it looks like we're, we're, we're winding down, and I, of course, want to be respectful of everyone's time, um, knowing that this is the heart, especially if you are an admissions colleague on the line, the heart of your recruitment season. Uh, no less uh, stressful for our student support uh, workers on the line who are, of course, invested in getting people between uh, getting getting our students through the, the midterm um, boom and, and on towards the end of their first semester. From my side and on behalf of my colleagues, I just wanted to thank you all for taking the time today to log on and learn more about our offerings. We, of course, are selfish and we believe that we offer a truly uh, impactful and special product here that, that really will support um, our college partners um, moving ahead to do the good work in supporting first-gen students. Um, this is a passion area for us. As in our approaching our 10th year, we are now a nationally known um, uh, uh, entity, and we want to continue to work ahead to really promote the college success of our, of our first-gen community. One thing I did just want to leave as a teaser, there are many things that we are in the process of developing as additional um, uh, benefits. We're always interested in hearing from you about things that you think should be important for us to be doing in the space because we believe that we're important stewards of that. One thing that we are doing is we're currently invested in working on college success modules to give to our college partners to use to help them track student success of first-gen students beyond just the first year because we know that a lot of current campus communities are only able to devote the, the time and attention to ensuring retention from year one to year two. We want to do more. We want to ensure re retention across that four and six year span. Um, additionally, we are also thinking about ways to look closer at the offerings in terms of uh, your campus uh, search tools, your online language, um, and look at those more critically with you to think about are these um, understandable and, and, um, and comprehensible for the first-gen student users who are visiting your site? Are there ways to improve the language, the phrasing, and the design of your sites to make sure the first-gen students are really uh, understanding and and uh, and bringing uh, bringing away from that experience the, the things that you want them to know about being on your campus. Um, so that's really something that we're going to be invested in moving forward. So again, I, I really wanted to. Whoop, I see one more uh, question pop up, and I, I want to get to it. So this is a good question. I, this is a, a difficult question to ask. Um, this uh, answer rather. This comes from Lisa at Calvin uh, College. Um, so the question is: Are there any statistics that we have at present on the correlation between increased retention and/or admissions via the partnership? So thank you for this question, Lisa. Um, I think I, I, I somewhat alluded to this earlier, but uh, we are at present more invested in the larger kind of third-party stamp of approval work of saying that your institution has these programs and has uh, the ability to serve these students. We are now invested in looking for ways to track and create. Um, ways to track more data around if a student came uh, to our website and it's the first time they ever heard about Calvin College and then that led them to becoming an applicant in your pool, something that you could see in your CRM or something that we could at least show as a source code the way that you might capture an admissions model. Um, you know, oh, I met this student at a, at a, at a college access fair. Oh, I met this a uh, student on a, a campus tour. We do want to think more critically about um, demonstrating that some of our student users are finding you uh, because of the site. However, we're, again, we're, we're more invested in the larger promotion of your programs and, and the larger kind of stamp of approval of, of saying, yes, this is an institution that does good work and, and hoping and pushing that students will see us, uh, see our featuring of your program and, and that will encourage them to come to your campus. The, the same um, 
we're, we're also thinking about ways to uh, think about, uh, we have of course heard anecdotally that our students who are looking or listening to and, and currently engaging in um, uh, reading our student blogs and stories are persisting at a higher level because our student bloggers are discussing the trials and tribulations and successes of being first gen. And we'd like to think that that is contributing a more personal um, effect towards keeping students positive and focused on that that uh, that degree attainment. Um, but I think it's a it's a valid question, um, and I think it's something that we are certainly uh, aware of um, of exploring more deeply. So I can see that that we are uh, we're we're approaching kind of uh, uh, we're approaching kind of the end of our time today together. We will be sending out information about what we've discovered if you came on late, or, or what we've covered <laughs> not discovered what we've covered if you've come on late. But I just wanted to issue a hearty thank you to all of you again for being with us today. Um, we are really excited about bringing uh, more of you on into partnership to 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 join our, our really robust uh, existing community of, of first-gen supporting institutions. Um, and again, my name is Ali Levy. You can see on, uh, on your screen right now um, that you can follow up with me with any questions that you have. Um, so uh, from all of us at the Center for Student Opportunity, thank you for taking the time today. Um, and we look forward to receiving your applications, setting up phone calls, um, and learning more about your institutions and ways we can partner. Thank you and have a great day.